Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk about this latest Mahler. Oh, Mahler, it's always Mahler. So much Mahler. Mahler 9, featuring the Minnesota Orchestra under Osmo Venske. Well, this has been, as all of you know, and I'm sure, a very hit and miss cycle with probably more misses than hits. And it's a shame because it's a great orchestra and they play beautifully. But Venska, well, Venska has, has blossomed, if you want to call it that word, metastasized, if you want to say it another way, into a conductor who is an incredible micromanager when it comes to playing these symphonies. He wants pretty. He wants gentle. He wants details, all at the expense of the big picture. And so a lot of these performances, unfortunately, have just been, well, sort of self-regarding, narcissistic, navel-gazing applications of podium technique, rather than investigations into the expressive spirit of the works in question. Now, this ninth is not that. This is one of the better ones. Let's be straight out with it. It's it's really very good in many respects, but it's still not ideal. And the reasons are, it's just sort of odd. It really is. Let's talk about the, the symphony movement by movement. You'll see what I mean. So the first movement is really very, very well done in terms of pacing. It's an exciting performance. It's not too fast. It's not really rushed, but it has energy. It has an extraordinary feeling of forward impetus, which is marvelous, even though it's at perfectly reasonable tempos. I mean, it takes 28 minutes, <clears throat> 27 minutes and 57 seconds. So that's that's really about the normal length of this movement. Um, it could be a minute longer, it could be a minute shorter, but that's really very sensible. And, and Venska just paces it as though it's going to continue to surge forward. And I'm very happy with that. That's wonderful. The problem with it, well, there are two problems with it. But first of all, there's there's no big damn damn at the climax. Where does it go? Why? That's a problem, frankly. But the real problem is an associated issue, which is that there are moments at climaxes where the textures just clog up. I mean, for all that Venska is very careful in terms of dynamic shading and balance in softer passages, when it starts to heat up, all of a sudden, everything just congeals and you miss some of the important contrapuntal lines. For example, the trombones. I mean, they're just nowhere to be found in this movement, except at that big, big climax where they come roaring out with ba, 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 you know, that sort of stuff. That's very well done. But when they have inner lines that are just supposed to be, you know, balanced with the, the other, the string lines at high volume, there, there's just nothing there. There's a moment in the recapitulation where everything just congeals into this, this, this shapeless lump of sound. It's so strange. I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, you have to listen to it and see what I mean. All of a sudden, all of the, the you know, melodic fabric seems to just coagulate. It just does. It's peculiar. Um, it doesn't happen often. It only happens a couple of times, but it happens at the big moments. And so you wonder what, what's going on. Anyway, that's one problem. The second movement is fantastic. Straight out marvelous. I mean, it's one of the best versions of it I've ever heard. Venska gets the second, the, the loopy waltz thing that Mahler asks accelerate each time you hear it. He actually does it. He starts out at a slow enough tempo that he has room to move forward. The woodwinds are nice and gawky. I mean, the strings really dig. It's just great. Why couldn't he do that everywhere else? I don't know. The Rondo Burlesca, it would have benefited from the same treatment because it begins so quickly that it has nowhere to go at the end. And again, you know, that's, you just kind of wish the guy would have taken a minute to think about it. Maybe he did, I don't know. And start with a 
little bit less less push so that when we get to that insane series of accelerations towards the end, where Mahler's marking it pew stretto, which means you know, more frenetic after da, ba, ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum. And by the time you get to the end, they're, they're hanging on for dear life. And it's not about expression anymore. It's just about survival. And it shouldn't be. It's supposed to be about malice and spite and bite. And the faster it goes, the less malicious it becomes. So uh, this was disappointing. I love the way it started. I mean, it was just played to a fairly well. But if you can't bring home the bacon in the end, what are you going to do, right? So then we get to the finale, the final adagio. Here again, we have the coagulation issue at the big climax. Oh my God. It's just there. There it's rushed. Unlike in the first movement, he just goes past it too quickly. And it all just sort of, sort of glops together. And it, it really is, it's, it's unfortunate because elsewhere it's very beautiful. I do think that those Zen-like episodes, do, 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 you know, that business when the harps are going bum, 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 that's just too quick. I don't know why he rushes through them. They have to be absolutely immobile. They have to give the impression of complete stasis. Now, obviously the music can't be that way. You don't have to play them as slow as molasses. I mean, you can get through it. But the, the impression, the effect has to be one of complete stillness. These, these don't, don't do that. They really don't. The ending of the whole symphony, on the other hand, is exquisitely beautiful. Venska is the master of the super duper uber pianissimo. That was the one thing that he could do. If I had listened to his, you know, going back retrospectively and thinking about his career on disc, we realized that that was symptomatic of some of the some of the fussiness that was going to be coming. But at the end of this symphony, you can't be quiet enough. And it's it's beautifully done. It's very sad. It's completely ethereal, evanescent. It's exactly the way it's supposed to sound. So, it, you know, it, it's not a bad performance, but it's not a fully realized one either. Uh, the sonics are terrific. I, I just wish, I just wish that he'd hit those big moments correctly and that he'd let the orchestra loose. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. It's that he never gives up control. And the bottom line is there's just too many things to pay attention to with this music. It, it's too contrapuntally intricate for you to shape every single line at speed, at high volume. And so it, it, it starts to come to pieces whenever the, the energy level gets highest and the expressive level gets most intense. And that's a real, real problem with Mahler 9s. So I can't say that I, I disliked it in, in, in a general sense, but it's not a great Mahler 9th. Plain and simple. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.